Today we are going to make something very special. A lathe. This video is special in two ways. Firstly, it is the first video on how to make a machine. And secondly, I drew the plants, which are in templates this time, in a CAD program called SolveSpace. I will put a link to its homepage into the description, as well as the download link to the plants. I invested a lot of time to make good and accurate plants, but since the motor I used is an old garage motor, and I don't know which motor you will use, I can't give you exact plans on how to tighten your motor to the lathe. But I will of course show you how I did it, so you can do it similarly. So let's get it started. Start with sawing out AH1 and AH2, two times each. Now drill holes into AH1. The diameter of your holes should be the outer diameter of the bearings you use. Now screw these pieces together. Don't use glue, since you later may want to change out some of the parts. Also put some screws into the top of the part. Drill holes vertically into the part and saw the top of it off. Now you can clamp tight and also exchange your bearings easy and fast using Allen screws. Now screw this piece onto two pieces of roof beams about one meter long each. This distance needs to be equal at any part of the lathe. Then add AH3. Now build the spindle using the parts SP1, SP2, SP3 and finally SP4. The pulley consisting of SP1, 2 and 3 is screwed onto SP4 which is attached to the spindle like shown. Now add another AH piece and put the spindle assembly into these two pieces. The mass of the spindle assembly combined with the bearings should make it spin very long and smoothly. Then screw R1 to both of the roof beams. This creates the rail the tailstock moves over. Now screw TS1 and TS2 together and put it into the rail. The assembled piece shouldn't wiggle around but should be able to slide forward and backward. Now assemble TS6 and TS7 similarly to H1 and H2. To make the actual tailstock, screw TS5.1 and TS5.2 together. Now sharpen a piece of threaded rod like shown. Then screw the threaded rod into the TS5 pieces. Because TS5.1 has a 15mm hole drilled into it, you can just put the tailstock onto the axis which is attached to the bearings. Now add TS4 and attach it using metal brackets. This assembly is very sturdy and should prevent the lathe from vibrating too much. Now insert a threaded rod into TS3 and bend it so you can turn it with your hands. When it goes down it should jam the tailstock into place. Then saw out C1 to C5. Screw C1 and C2 into place, followed by C3 and C4. To screw C3 and C4 into place, I bend some metal brackets using a vise and a hammer.
then close it up by screwing C5 into place. Now sort C6 and C7 and add them to the assembly. Now sort MA1 to 3. I use a hole saw for this by the way. After that, glue these pieces together. Then attach it to the motor's axis. Now saw out some pieces like this to mount the motor to the lathe. Drill a hole into the piece so you can close the clamp using a bolt and a hex nut and therefore jamming the motor into it. Then screw some cuboids to the clamps and put some allen screws into these cuboids. You'll see why to do that in a second. Now screw a plank to the side of the lathe and add another cuboid like shown. This creates a rail on which the motor can slide. This way you will be able to use the allen screws like shown to tighten up the fan belt. By the way I attached P1 to the axis using the same method like the pulley. Now it's time to make the tool rest using all the TR parts. Screw TR2 to TR1. And TR3 to TR4. The metal sheet, which is TR5, which I bent just like the brackets, lets the tool slide easier over the tool rest. As you can see, the tool rest is able to wiggle around just a bit. To prevent that from happening, I use a dull allen screw to jam it into place. This reduces the wiggling significantly. Finally, we are going to make the chuck. We will use the CH parts for this, as well as four threaded rods and some hex nuts. These screws should protrude just a little bit, so they can really grab onto the workpiece. After you assembled these parts like shown, you should be able to move the jaws individually. Now screw the chuck to P1. Now you can add a switch like I did and turn the motor on and the lathe should just work fine. Because the chuck is in self-centering you should be very careful to get the workpiece centered. So I couldn't think of anything to make at this point but I of course have to show you that the lathe indeed works. So I will just play around just a little bit.
So at the end of this video, I just want to say thanks for viewing it. Give it a like if you want to. Share it if you've got friends who are interested in things like this. And, well, have a great day.